Well, I've started building the engine, and you know, I was warned by the inestimable Will Patterson that this kid is an absolute dog and the engine doesn't fit properly. Um, there's a couple of weird little spots like these guys here, just not at all um, any kind of you know, locating guides or anything like that for these pieces, for that one and for this one on the other side. But the main hurdle I've come across so far is the exhausts. So this here and this guy here are our exhausts and that's pretty primitive. <clears throat> so there's a fair bit of drilling out involved there otherwise it's going to look plastic playland. So I better get stuck in with the drill. Fingers crossed. So in order to drill out the exhaust holes I've got my handy mini drill. I've chosen a bit it's about 0 0.6, 0 0.8 of a millimetre. Basically done it by sight to see what will fit into the space there. <clears throat> and I guess the trickiest part of this is just making sure that you get it bang in the middle of the exhaust. You don't want it coming through the edge and you know, being off kilter or breaking the edge of that sort of circular pipe. That's pretty much all there is to it. So I'm going to do a few more of those. Yeah, it does make a big difference. I've already done the other side. And you can see what a difference it makes. Um, obviously I recommend leaving the pieces on the sprue. It's much, much easier to work with than when you've already clipped them off. So yeah, I'll keep going. I'll show you what it looks like. And just doing the last one here now. So obviously you know, I could have gone out and bought a resin exhaust kit. Spent more money than probably... I paid for the kit, um, but you know, this is the part of an old kit that I really enjoy is just bringing it up to modern spec. Um, loved this little drill for a long time. I was too cheap to buy one of these little mini drills, and I just, you know, fart about using a scalpel blade, turning the scalpel round and round and round and round. Nightmare. Once you buy one of these little guys, they, uh, they pay for themselves. They're great. So, yeah. Here's our exhausts. You don't have to go all the way through. Once they're painted black, you'll get the sense of it being a hollow pipe. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's keep on going with the engine build. So our first little bit of scratch building, um, the wiring on the top of the engine, which is going to be very visible, could leave a lot to be desired. So I'm going to paint the whole engine, but before I do, I want to add some pieces that are going to be quite close to the engine before I start adding all the sort of fiddly wiring and stuff like that. That'll come after the painting. So these two bits here, just some bits of sprue. I'll put them on the top there. And this is going to be a little filler cap for this sort of radiator cowl thing here. And I might do a little bit of detailing around here. So look, you know, I don't get too hung up on complete historical accuracy, but it needs a bit of detailing. So look online, find some references, see what you think looks right, and then just go for it. I'll get stuck in now. I've also just cut out a piece of styrene, put it on the back here to just you know, basically detail up that boring area and you can see here some little tiny pieces that I've cut off some stretched sprue so here's a piece of stretched sprue, good for aerials etc like that I'm sure you all know how to do that and I'm just going to mount those along the edges so that it's like bolts it's all just you know, gubbins detail to give it a bit more extra life so here's where we're at so we've got the two strips along the top there, a bit of wiring, we've got this little drainage valve thing and this kind of cover that's been put on there. A little bit of work to do sanding that down, but yeah, definitely this top part that's going to be visible, suddenly a lot more interesting. And that's how I scratch build. There'll be more wiring done, but for now, it's time to paint. So here we are with everything painted black, and now I'm going to do some dry brushing to bring out the texture on the metals. So I'm going to assume most of you guys know how to do this, but just in case you don't, dry brushing, let's move the camera, um, dry brushing the metal texture, it's a beautiful way to get a really lovely, realistic metal texture on metal. My goodness, repeating. Um, so yeah, here goes. I've got silver here, so I've got a range of colors. I've got dark iron, I've got gun metal, I've got flat aluminium, and I've got silver here, and I'm just going to get some silver on my brush. 
wipe most of it off on a bit of paper and then just dry brush it on those two rocker colors, uh, rocker covers. <clears throat> so most of it's gone. I find this is the most effective way to get really lovely natural metal textures. You just let that black undercoat shine through. And this is very realistic, so let's zoom in up close there. So you get a sense there for what we're talking about. Um, I'll keep going painting various parts. I'm going to paint the body of the engine sort of iron, um, some highlights in silver here and there, and maybe some aluminium here and there. Just see how we go. Let's keep on going. So here we are after a couple of coats. Um, the rocker covers and the exhaust are done in silver. The rest is done in a sort of dark iron. It's quite a subtle effect. The next thing that we do, before we sort of pick out all details, so the reason I'm doing it now is I'm painting all this now before I put in really delicate ignition wires on the top. Otherwise I'm just going to destroy those every time I try and paint it. The other trick here is to do just a light wash with some um, Van Dyke Brown oil paint. So I've got some oil paint in here, it's been heavily diluted with some thinners, and this is just perfect for splodging on as oil. Makes just really lovely, get a bit more thinners in there. Just a really lovely, greasy, oily effect. So you can already see that there. Um, I'll take a couple of photos, it's a bit tricky to see on the camera compared to still photography, but yeah, just, you know, it weathers up your surface, makes it like a real machine that's been used. So I'll do a few splotches of that, take some photos, some before and after photos. So here's where we're at. It's looking pretty good, pretty happy with that. Got some oil stains and like on top. And yeah, now it's time to start doing the wiring. So for the wiring, all I've got is an old phone recharger here. I've started to strip the copper wires out, check the end, you can see where the copper is there. And all I'm going to do, I'm assuming that you probably know how to do this already, but just in case you don't, with a pair of scissors, really, really gently cut through that outer casing until, I hope you can see that there, until you get down to the wire, and then just bang, pull the outer casing off. And once that's done, I've got a whole bunch of beautiful copper wires here, and I'm just going to drill little holes in each of these kind of spark plug mounts, one, two, three, four, five, six, and the same on the other side, stick the pieces of copper into it and then wire them together as a wired loom. So let's get stuck in. So I've got here a whole bunch of copper wires that I have taken out of the wiring and it's time to start attaching them to the little holes that I've drilled in. Um, so at first I'm going to start with a group of about six that's all in one strand and the plan is just to branch them off individually attach them to each of those holes uh, I'm going to be using some some cyanacrylate glue uh, should stick the two together very nicely it's very fiddly so I'm not going to video this but you get the idea we'll see how we go okay so that's done it's bit of a nightmare, those, those wires were very, very, very fine. But it's done, tiny bit messy, might try and tidy that up a little bit later. But the last thing I intend to do is run a lubrication oil pipe from this little valve here down the side of the engine there to the back. So for that, I have got some solder wire. What I love about this stuff is that it just holds the shape perfectly very malleable. So I've got one little end that's bent, ready to go into that plug, and the other half 
I'm just going to bend it right about there and send it down through the guts of the machine. Once this is glued into place, again using the same glue, uh, I'm going to paint it black. So that's about where my bend needs to be. So you can just see how very malleable this stuff is. It's great for this sort of job. Um, you know, in thick gauge wire like this would be a bastard to try and bend otherwise. Um, so yeah, that's going to go down there. It's going to go down the back there. I'll paint it black and I'll come back and show you very soon. Lastly, I'm just putting on some very, very tiny bits of masking tape. So I've just cut a very, very small piece there. It's you know, literally one and a half millimeters wide and just wrapping it around the pipe to look a little bit like a clamp. Once those are painted silver, it'll look like some kind of hose clamp. Well, that's the engine detailed, so yeah, I'm very happy with that. Um, yeah, nothing I would really change there. I've tightened up those wires a little tiny bit at the top. I feel very happy with that. Um, next step is the firewall and the oil tank, these two here. So you can see on the firewall that oh, the molded on detail is pretty lame and yeah bit of room for that. So that sits up the back of the engine about here. There'll be a bit of room in between the two for some more wires and gubbins and bits and pieces. That'll be my next challenge. But for now, I think I'll give it a night. Call it a night. Now that we've got the engine in a pretty good place, I thought I'd look at the firewall which is behind it in the engine bay. So I had a quick paint of it, but it looks pretty crap at the moment. But this is the firewall with some fairly rudimentary molded on detail. Um, I found a couple of references online just to show you, giving you a bit of an idea of what went into the firewall and you know how much more detailed the top of the tank needs to be compared to what we've got here to work with. So there's a fair bit of scratch building involved. So what I'm thinking is I will put maybe another just block of styrene here. Uh, I'm thinking maybe some little styrene triangles just to prop up the bottom of the tank there. Um, hopefully some strips that will go around the top of the tank and then some tubing that will come out of it down to this sort of dead zone down the bottom. So that's my plan. Let's get stuck in. That's those pieces done. <clears throat> the next thing I wanted to do is this little outlet valve that goes on the top of the tank. So I'm going to use this just piece of offcut sprue here and sand it down so that it's kind of a half, half cylinder basically. You'll see once I've sanded it down, but it'll be like a little valve that I can put a pipe into. Okay, so. Here is the firewall with some bits stuck to it. Um, here is the tank with my little bit of old sprue shaped to the top. And I've also got, this is an old chopper chop stick from a lollipop. So cut off little slices of that, it's nice and hollow. And you get these great little circular rings. So I'm going to put one of those on the top here, just there. And then that'll be perfect to run a tube out of. I was going to drill into that piece, but it's going to be so fragile. Let's just use that ring as like a seal and then just run the pipe out of it. So yeah, some constructive random pipes now. And basically I'm going to be using, once again, I'm going to be using my uh, solder. Really nice and malleable. It's about one millimeter diameter. And a couple of other bits and pieces of wire that I've got around. So there's a couple of different diameters. It's not all the same. So yeah, I'll do some constructive blonking on with glue and we'll see how we go. I'll show you in just a moment. So while I'm waiting for those wires to dry, so remember, <clears throat> use CA glue, don't just use plastic glue. While I'm waiting for those to dry, I figured that we could actually use a little bit more detail down this area here. So cut another piece of plastic card, cut a little couple of pieces off some plastic wire, and we'll just do some more general gubbins detailing. So this is the stuff I love. I do love this, you know, generic, not too focused, not too true to reality stuff. Just gives it more detail and it's more interesting. So yeah, I'll stick those on as well. Feel free to be free. You know, that's what I feel. Okay, I also got crazy 
and I did some little tiny bolts, just one, two, three, four, along the top. And the way I did that, get some stretched sprue, and just cut up some tiny little lengths of it, and then glue them on. You need a steady hand and decent eyesight, but it does add something. You can also do that with just little blobs of white PVA glue, but it's not quite the same to me. So I'm going to let all this dry, and then come back and play with it a bit later on. I feel like the detail's pretty good now. While that is drying, I'm just doing these two straps that go around the tank. So for those, I use the foil that comes off the top of a whiskey bottle. You can use the foil that comes off the top of a wine bottle. Uh, I've also pe heard people use the metal foil that comes on the top of a margarine container. As long as it's metallic, it's not sort of plasticky. And then you can just cut off thin lines like that. That's all I've done there. And then shape it to that. And I'll just put some kind of little latch or buckle or something over the top of it and it's a lot more realistic than this molded on kind of pipey looking bit. Yeah, again, not feeling too constrained by reality but it's fun to do this kind of scratch building stuff. This is what I love. So after a bit of airbrushing of the firewall and a bit of detailing of the tank, we're in a pretty good place. There's still some weathering to be done, some oil stains and the like, but I think yeah, if you compare that to where we were goodness, what a difference. So yeah, let's get on with some weathering and a bit of painting and detailing. So here we are, I've finished detailing the cockpit. So we've got our firewall, quite a lot of detail added there, as you can see. I'll show some photos later on of before and after shots, kit standard and what we've done here. We've got the oil tank with the two straps added on, the new top piece at the top there, the new uh, valve for the hose to go into. We've got our engine that we've previously detailed. I've also painted up really really roughly the two halves of the fuselage and also a piece that goes at the front. Now the instructions, oh boy, the instructions are atrocious and I was warned of this. So, engine. Engine is cemented in instruction number seven. Instruction number seven, the only thing that's meant to hold the engine in is you stick it to the part of the propeller. It's crazy. Um, I am going to, at this stage, cement in the firewall where it's meant to go. Plonk it in there, can't really see, sorry. Uh, plonk the firewall in, stick the oil reservoir, the oil tank into the, re into the firewall. I'm going to try putting the engine in so that the exhaust sit just there. I'm hoping that that's enough to keep it well aligned. And then once I've finished the cockpit, I'll join the two halves of the fuselage together. And then we'll see about sticking on this little front piece, which somehow aligns it with the propeller. The risk is a very wonky propeller. But um, I'm not going to use too much glue on the engine exhaust, so if it's all gone wrong, I'll just tear it out and rework it then. But yeah, that's my plan. So I'll stick them in. I won't uh, quite bore you with all the details of that. I will just stick in quickly now the firewall. So I'm just going to scrape away a little bit of the paint here so that we get some purchase. And yeah, I'll stick that in quickly. Just using plain old Tamiya liquid cement here. All the wires that are still poking out of here, all the pipes, are waiting to be just glued into the right positions. Um, so I really wasn't quite sure exactly where they would go. Um, and I also have a piece of pipe ready to go into the top of the oil tank once that's ready and then sneak that down underneath the rest of the engine. So, stick this bad boy in place. Once again, it's a little tricky to know without mating the two halves of the fuselage together right now if you're in the right spot or not, but looks right, feels right to me. Seems to mate up pretty closely. So I will leave that to glue. Might put a bit more glue on the back side of it, and then I'll come back in a tick. So I've just found a problem. The little valve that I've put on top of the oil tank 
is going to mean that I can't put the other half of the fuselage on, so that's going to have to come off. Bugger. Oh well. Well, here we have it. <clears throat> so there are obviously some fit issues. It's a bit of a bastard of a kit, to be honest. Um, I was feeling so smug. Like, oh yeah, I'm going to make this work, no problems. Other people have had problems. It is a bit of a bugger. Look at the warping on those two bits there. So this bit and this bit are meant to meet up, and they don't. But that's not what we're here for today. We're here today to talk about the detailing of the engine bay. So overall, I'm pretty happy. You can see it looks a lot more interesting than where we would have started from. Down the bottom there, we've got lots of interesting wires and gubbins and stuff like that to play around with. So once that's all mated up to the airframe, I think that's going to look very interesting. And yeah, it's just a lot more interesting than what you would have started out with if you'd stuck with the kit. So yeah, I'm going to keep making the rest of this plane. I'll do a series of videos, one on the cockpit, uh, one on detailing the, the wheels uh, and the wheel bay, uh, the wheel wells underneath, a whole lot of stuff like that. Um, please do come back and have a look. In the meantime, yeah, I'm going to keep fighting this bugger of a kit. But it's very satisfying. And look, I guess this is just to show you that, you know, with a little bit of imagination, a little bit of patience, you can just detail those bits that are otherwise pretty boring and pretty basic and make it work. So, yeah, look, don't let this fool you. I think the actual interior, we're laughing. We just have to make the two halves of the fuse large work. But overall, for what we set out to achieve in this video, tremendously happy. Um, if you do have any questions, please chime in down below. Uh, otherwise, Visit my blog, stateofbubbleworkshop.com, and um, yeah, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for lots of other interesting stuff. See you next time, guys, and enjoy.